Hey guys! Welcome to Life Church Online. We are so glad to have you join us here today. One of the opportunities we offer here at Life Church is our Growth Track class. We design Growth Track with you in mind to help you in your journey with God. Another opportunity we offer you here is a small group discussion. This is a chance for you to meet new people at Life Church and get connected. If you would like to know more about these classes or know more about Life Church in general, please send us a message on Facebook. If you would like to get our latest updates, like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram. Thank you for joining us here today. And we hope you enjoyed today's service.
Hello, everyone. Welcome to Life Church Online. We are so glad that you have joined us today. And today we're going to continue our sermon series called Seek. And we're talking about how we seek after God, how we search for God, we look for God in our life. And what are some ways that we do that? And what are some things that happen when we do seek God? Uh, last week, I believe Pastor Jim Kilgore, he spoke on the idea of prayer and how we seek God through prayer and some of the things that happen when we pray. And I'm going to kind of go off of that today and, and talk about a part of this that I think is really important that we understand how powerful seeking God, knowing God, experiencing God, having a relationship with God can really change your life. It can change my life. It has changed my life over the years. I mean, when I started out, I remember how insecure and how, uh, how I lacked confidence in my life. And today I want to talk about that part, the confidence and the boldness that we can receive when we learn how to have relationship and seek God on a daily basis. Um, I'd like to read our kind of our main text that we've been reading over the several weeks, and that is in Jeremiah 29, verse 13. And it says, Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. And you will seek me, and you will find me when you search for me with all of your heart. And so God is saying, I, I want all of you. I want 100% of your life dedicated to me. And that's what God wants. And you know, if you are in a marriage relationship, you understand that you and your spouse, you become faithful to one another. You become committed fully and totally to that person in your life because you love them. And God is the same way. He wants us to be fully engaged in this relationship on a daily basis, on an hourly basis, on a minute basis, to where we are giving our all to God. We're seeking God with all of our heart. And he said, if you will do that, you will begin to find me. You'll begin to experience me. And what's really interesting to me is we, we say seek God when actually God is seeking us. God's looking for us. He desires our life. He desires our relationship with him. And when you seek him, he also seeks out you. And he will, he will put things in your life that you never thought were possible. He can bless your life in so many ways. One of the things he can do in your life is he can give you a confidence. You know, I know a lot of people lack confidence. I remember when I first started out as a, as a Christian and as a young person uh, serving God, I remember my insecurities and how high they were. I had a lot of insecurities. I had a lot of, uh, I was very shy and very backward. And, and I, I just kept praying. I kept doing the part that I knew to do as far as, a, as being a Christian. And as I prayed and as I began to read God's word, I started developing in my relationship with God. And I started feeling that God was with me. I started sensing his presence in my life. I started sensing the, 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 the knowledge and knowing that God is with me. He's working in my life. And I started to see miracles happen in my life. And after, after one small miracle would happen, then, then I would have confidence, more confidence to move forward in a little bit bigger way. And God would show me bigger things and greater things in my life. And, and it just, it was this God confidence that would happen in my life. And it brought such a boldness to me. It brought a, an ability to do things that in my own personality, I was not able to really do on my own. I didn't have that within me. At least I never felt like I did. But when you have God and you, have, you, you experience the Holy Spirit in your life, God's Spirit, God will give you a confidence that is beyond any education that you have. And there's nothing wrong with education. You should get an education. But when you seek God, he gives you a confidence that goes beyond anything you can learn. It's, it, it's just this assurance on the inside that everything's going to work out and that no matter what you're doing with your life, it's God's in charge. God's in control. In fact, I love the scripture. It says, uh, that all things work together for the good to them that love God and to them that are called according to his purpose. So when I know that, when I actually start to experience that scripture in my life and understand that even the bad things that look bad in my life, God can work it for my good and I can have this confidence on the inside when things on the outside don't look so good. And it's so exciting when I see that happen. I've seen miracles happen in my life knowing that God was in complete control. And, it, and when I got through that circumstance or that situation, 
I came on the outside, other side of that, and I realized, hey, God's in charge of this. My life is not my own. God loves me, and he cares about where I'm at, and he is with me through every situation. And uh, as I was reading this, I, I was thinking about the story of, of David and how young man David, he, was, he, he played his harp. We talked about David the first week in our series and how the Bible says David was a man after God's own heart. He sought the heart of God, and he, he played his harp, and he worshiped God, and he, he got in the presence of God. And as he got in the presence of God, his confidence level began to grow little by little. And then before long, God would put him to the test. And the scripture says that one day a bear came out of the woods and it was going to try to eat one of his, uh, his sheep, and he slew the bear with his hands. Now, that sounds almost like a fairy tale, but the reality, I believe it. I believe God gave him that power. Uh, another moment, uh, a lion came out, and he slew the lion. And that was just a setup for what God was trying to show him. There's other things that are up ahead, and I want you to put your trust in me. And, and the Bible says that his father came to him and said, I want you to go to your brothers and take them a lunch. So he goes to the battlefield where his brothers are at, and he notices that there's this giant, his name is Goliath, and he's standing on the battlefield, and he's defying the armies of the Lord. He's just speaking very defiantly against God's people. And when David saw that, something on the inside of him, this, 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 this uh, holy anger, I guess you will, got a hold of him, and he said, that is not right, what's happening. And everyone in the camp of Israel, they were hiding. They were afraid of this giant. They were men of war from their youth. They had power to do it. They had the skill set, but they were scared to death of this, this giant Goliath. But the Bible says that David, something inside of him started rising up. King Saul actually asked the question, said, who's going to go out before this, this giant and fight this giant? He was calling for someone to come and fight him. And the only person that stood up to go fight this giant was little boy David. And David stood up and said, I'll fight him. And people looked at him and said, oh, you should just go home. This is crazy. King Saul was going to put all of his armor on him and give him a sword and all this stuff. He said, no, I can't wear this. This doesn't work. I have not proven these things. And the scripture says that David went out to battle. And when he went out to battle, he fought against a giant. But it doesn't say he just went out there casually or went out there nervous. He went out there with fear in his heart. But it says he went out there with a confidence and he spoke the words of the Lord. He declared God's word over his life. And here's what he said in that passage. I would like to read it. It's found in 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verse 45. So David said to that Philistine, the giant, he said, you come against me with a sword and with the spear and with the javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel whom you have defied. And this day the Lord will deliver you into my hands. I love that confidence that is coming out of his mouth. He is so confident at this moment. You might think that sounds crazy. It may, sometimes our confidence in God can even sound a little crazy. Uh, I've had people accuse me of being crazy at times when that confidence would come over me. But this is what David said. I'll strike you down and I'll cut off your head. Okay? This is stories we told our children. This very day, I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals. So they go into graphic detail about what they're going to do with their bodies. We're not going to go into all that. But verse 47, and this is Old Testament, by the way. Verse 47 says, And all of those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. So David, the scripture literally says that David ran out on the battlefield. He did not walk timidly. He did not walk with uh, reservation. He did not work, walk worrying with fear in his heart, but he ran towards the giant with a confidence and a boldness that his God would deliver him into his 
hand. I love that faith and that confidence that David had. He was a man after God's heart. He was a man that pursued God. Let me tell you, the closer you get to God in your life, the more confidence you will have in your life. You may not know what's happening in your life, but you have this confidence that you know that you know that you know that all is going to be okay because God is on your side. And the battle doesn't belong to you. It belongs to the Lord. That's what happens when you seek God. When you seek God with all of your heart, He will give you an assurance a faith, a confidence, a boldness to speak words that you could not speak on your own. God is for you, friends. I want to tell somebody today, if God be for us, who can be against us? And that's the boldness that we need to have, that confidence in God. I like what Paul, Apostle Paul said in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. He said, I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. He didn't leave off that last part. He added that part because if he would have, that would have been very arrogant and very proud. But he understood that his power lies in Christ Jesus. He's the one that we need in our life in order to do all things for his purpose and for his will. And uh, there's one more story in the scripture in Acts 4 verse 13 that I love. It's about uh, the, the apostle Peter and the apostle John. They had just healed this lame man. Uh, he had been lame from his birth. And here he was sitting at this, this, this gate, and all of a sudden God heals him as, as they speak the words of faith and boldness come over them. They lifted him by the hand, and he was healed. But then there were onlookers, and there were some other people that were watching this, and some of the Pharisees became, uh, they began to question this. But in their heart, they said this. They said to one another, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled and ordinary men, they were amazed and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. Look at that. It says they were unlearned. It didn't mean that they didn't have some kind of education. They had an education. But they were not educated in this type of work that they were doing because Peter was a fisherman and he was doing the work of the Lord. And John was not schooled in this type of work either. But yet what happened, one thing about these two men, Peter and John were in the inner circle of Jesus. They were the two men that were in the very close circle with Jesus, and they had a very close relationship with Jesus. And because of that closeness and that relationship, they had something that many others did not have, and it was this boldness to declare God. They had a confidence to speak of God. They had a self, a God self-confidence, if you will, that Everything they did, they knew that God would help them if they walked in God's authority and in his power. And so today I want to encourage us that you may feel ordinary and you may sometimes feel like you don't have the ability or the skill set. But if you will put your confidence in God, God can help you to get through whatever you're going through. He expects us to do our part, but he wants us to put our full and total confidence in him because he will Give us the courage and the confidence to see it through and to get through it. And we will see great things as a result of our relationship with God. They noticed that they had been with Jesus. That's a wonderful thing for people to notice, that we have spent time with Jesus. And because of that time, we have this amazing courage and confidence that cannot be given to us through education. It cannot be given to us through any other relationship that we might have but only through the relationship with Jesus Christ. Today, I just want to encourage you to, to begin to pursue a relationship with Jesus. Pursue a relationship with Jesus, because in Jesus, you will find everything that you need. If you've never given your life to God, you can do that today by just praying and saying, God, I believe, I receive, forgive me of my sins and create in me a clean heart. I wonder if we could just pray today and ask God to bless us and help us to walk in his purpose so that we can walk in the confidence that he has for us. Let's pray. Lord, we love you today. We thank you so much for every person that is watching today and listening to this broadcast. I pray you will bless them. I pray that their hearts would be open and receptive to this word. And God, that we give our life to you today. God, create in me a clean heart 
and help me to surrender my life to you and put myself under the, the authority of your word, God. We believe in you, we trust you, and we thank you for the sacrifice that you made at the cross so that I could have forgiveness and I could have freedom and I could have a confidence that only comes through knowing Jesus Christ. I, I receive the work of Christ in my life today. I receive your Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, to empower me with courage and with confidence and to save my heart. I give you all my life in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you today. We're so glad you joined us today. And if you've never been a part of Life Church, we encourage you to join us. We have church every Sunday at 12 o'clock at Pyramus Bellinas. It's a pancake house. Uh, this is temporary location. And you can join us. And we're going to have a great time. Also, we, will, uh, we also have small groups uh, at 7 o'clock on Wednesday on Zoom. So I encourage you to join up for that. This is a great place to really build your relationships with the right kind of people that will help you to grow and to find that freedom in God that God has for your life and to find that confidence that he wants to give you. Every week at this time, we also give you an opportunity to give. We believe that giving is a way that we express our faith in God and we show God that we trust him with every part of our life, including our finances and our resources. And today we just give you an opportunity to give. And I want to say to all of you that do give, thank you for your generosity. Thank you for giving to be a part of something that makes a difference. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you, God, for this offering and for this opportunity to give. We pray you will bless it and, God, stretch it and use it for your kingdom's purpose. God, help us to reach the people that, you, that are hungry and looking for you. And, God, let this word fall on good ground today. And God, I pray, bless this offering so that we can be more effective and reach more people with the gospel and help those who are in need. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you today, and we are looking forward to seeing you next week or in person or here online. And let's worship together in this next song.
We are so happy that you joined us here today on Facebook Live, and we hope to see you next week. Thank you.